What's up, people? We got some special guests today. Um, I've been on this apparently major tool um, focus, tool tirade the last couple of uh, weeks here. Uh, I think it's only going to get deeper because we'll talk a little bit about this here, but I have Scott and uh, Harrison from uh, Auburn, where uh, Sonic USA is headquartered. Uh, we're going to kind of tell the Sonic story. We're going to tell the story of Obsessed Garage and Sonic and how we're how we're in this room together because it wasn't uh, it wasn't super easy for me. I've talked told this much. It wasn't super easy for me to convince them. Uh, we'll tell how Scott you know had a major part in that, uh, and then we want to talk about you know, the other tools and talk about the you know the story of the the product line and how it came about and all of that. So. Um, uh, make sure you're asking your questions. So I'm going to I'm gonna sort of skip over a lot of the detailing stuff here today on this live stream. Um, so bring your questions in about tools and, you know, comparisons and, and what you think and what your what your questions are about foam inlays and all that stuff. So so do that and I'll, I'll manage that that chat here today. But um, give us a little background. What do you guys do? Uh, so, Scott, what do you do with the company? What's your role? Uh, and then we'll kind of dig into the story. Um, well, my title is director of sales, but it's my responsibility uh, is multifaceted in the sense that I, I manage a sales team. Um, expectations that I'm helping the uh, the company uh, di the direction of where we go verticals from you know automotive, aviation, agriculture, manufacturing. Mm -hmm. um, but ba basically, director of sales um, and uh, started out in sales, so I've been in sales my entire. Uh, uh, career with Sonic Tools. Cool. Yeah, stay on the mic there, so people can. I'm gonna be yelling at you here in a okay. second. So, um, so you, um, you got your start. You were in Orlando, right? And Correct. then, and now you're up at HQ, uh, which is uh, that was my first time ever to Auburn, Alabama. It's such a cool place. I like it. I even yeah. consider. I'm like, man, maybe I should move my headquarters up there. It's a, it's a not what you think of Alabama. You no. Know? <laughs> No, it's, a, it's a unique little pocket. Yeah, when I Alabama. think of Alabama, I think of horrible public schools and uh, lots of farmland and cows and all that. That's what I assume. Uh, but uh, I assumed wrong when I went to when I went to Auburn. How about you, Harrison? What's your um, what's your role with the company? <laughs> so I'm uh, Harrison Kane. I'm the director of operations for Sonic Tools. Um, so what I do is I uh, manage just operations from you know start to finish. So anything that starts from uh, you know the sales guys processing an order um it just makes sure that the transition from you know sales uh, for that order to get to the warehouse it packed uh, properly and correctly and uh then that process of actually getting it shipped to the customer um so i obviously manage the the warehouse staff but uh I, r I really focus on um you know efficiencies and and the general operation uh, of, of what we do on a daily basis so one of the about my job that I really enjoy is actually uh, working with our president to create new and and new new cool kits, uh, new foam kits, uh, anything of, of that nature. And um, that's that's probably the more creative side of my job, um, mm -hmm. which is what I, I really enjoy doing. Which is didn't, why I have the relationship. Didn't with, you uh, start as like an intern or something like I that? I did. Yeah, I, I'm a Auburn alumni, War uh -huh. Eagle. Yeah. Um, so uh, from from there, I was an intern. Um, working in marketing you know graduate with a marketing degree not mm. you know i knew i was going to go into business i don't know if it's for myself or for somebody else um so i started with the company and i was you know i, I grew up in the in the car world you know brokering and then working uh, at a volkswagen dealership in a chrysler jeep dodge ram store and you know I'd, i want to stay in the automotive field but not necessarily in the dealer world mm -hmm. so you know working for sonic tools is a great outlet for me um and then once i actually started and worked for them, i was like man these people have you know something going on going on here so I've transitioned through a lot, you know, been through marketing, sales, and, and now operations, and, and I love mm -hmm. every minute of it. You know, we just, we have a really cool product that's different from a lot of our competitors, um, you know, when it comes to the, the professional tool market. So we just, uh, we, we make really great products, and it's, it's easy and fun to look at, too. So explain that to me. So Sonic um, is a company out of the Netherlands. And then explain the U.S. representation, what you, how you guys represent the product, so where it's made, how it's made, and then how we bring it in. So explain that a little bit to me. Sure. So, um, you know, Sonic Equipment um, is the parent company based out of uh, Amsterdam mm -hmm. um, in the Netherlands. So uh, not Denmark. I've been I've said Denmark one time, Denmark. In, a, in a to me it's all the same freaking thing. Sorry <laughs> to you Europeans. <laughs> Yeah, um, no. But yeah, in uh, Amsterdam, Netherlands is where the parent company is. That's right. Heavy Roots uh, throughout Europe. You know, they've been doing business over there for you know fifty plus years. Mm -hmm. um, 
<clears throat> so you know they they've had their business through you know throughout Europe. Um, you know for for example Vol uh, Volkswagen Germany. You when you start at any sort of Volkswagen store there, you're guaranteed to get a uh, Sonic toolbox filled with our tools um, mm -hmm. that actually have a you know a, a Volkswagen specific part number to it, um, etc. So um, you know our our uh, the owners of the company um, have heavy roots within the Volkswagen Audi Porsche world mm -hmm. um, from a previous uh, business endeavor and they imported a sonic tools box you know based off of the recommendation um of the technicians over in germany you're uh, talking the uh, steven the re the owner of sonic usa that's correct sorry is yep. the so so he has ex ex you guys have exclusive rights to purchase the product from sonic parent in amsterdam that's correct so when he sold his last company, you know, they're like, what is that toolbox that, you know, that we got imported? That was, that was good stuff. Mm -hmm. And it was hard for us to get it, you know, had to, had to go through, you know, Europe to find it. Mm -hmm. So I go, Let, let's talk to those guys. Um, you know, so fast forward a couple of years and they, you know, went over to Amsterdam, met with the, uh, the two owners over there and they go, look, we've always wanted to join the U S market. You know, mm -hmm. he, they go, we just don't understand yeah, how to communicate, and you know, a lot of European companies don't don't know how to do that. Well, it's it's that, and also they didn't understand the current professional tool model here. Mm -hmm. You know, they they go tool trucks, and they're you know forty dollars for a screwdriver. We just we don't we don't we didn't we don't get it. We're happy with what we're doing. We're gonna you know continue on. So when they actually got a partner that understood it, that had a background in the industry, mm -hmm. um, you know, is they you know apparently it only took a couple minutes for them to convince them. They're like, you guys are it. Right. You know, we we want in. Let's let's build the U.S. market together. So for the last, you know, almost six years now, um, our CEO and president have been building the company, you know, uh, piece by piece. And Scott and I have been there since almost the beginning. Um, Scott more so than me. Scott was there about a year before I was. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's been a it's been a fun journey, you know, it, it kind of changing the the whole tool market as a whole or the professional tool market, you know, within America. Mm -hmm. His level is a little too high, Bryce. He's blowing me out here. Yeah. I'm adjusting it on the fly with well, Just <laughs> put the headphones on. You'll hear you're blowing my eardrums out. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so the the product is is uh, the parent company is in the Netherlands. Um, uh, is, is Stephen the sole owner of the? Uh, or is it a partnership? I mean, so so when the when you say those guys went over, was it just him and a few employees that went over that started it? Yeah, Stephen and Colby um, are are the you know the two owners uh, currently. Who are, Stephen owned APR um, and sold APR uh, to a private equity firm, and then um, and then um, you know, because they built that amazing brand, mm -hmm. and Colby was an executive for the company, right? That's and correct. so yep. when they sold and left left the company and wanted to find something new. And they're bringing, you know, then they found the Sonic product, bring the product over, <coughs> get exclusive exclusivity to sell the product and market the product here in the U.S. And so then essentially what happens is you guys, as a company, you buy the stuff from Europe in quantity, you bring it in here, and then you're able to, to just kind of market within the same brand of, you know, Sonic Tools throughout the U.S. That's right. So, you know, we took the uh, Sonic Tools name, um, mm -hmm. you know, Sonic Equipment. Equipment just meant too many different things you know tools we, we sell tools and cabinetry solutions so mm -hmm. sonic tools um and what you know what they did is move it to auburn alabama which is where apr is based out of as well yep um so you know they, they moved it to auburn alabama and we are just the north we own all the rights to north america sure so we're the north american uh, marketing sales and distribution center gotcha and then the so so help me with the product and manufacturing so what's what's european based uh, the sonic own you know production facilities in taiwan or china mm -hmm. how does how does the production of the product work i'll let you speak to that yeah so there's well there's no production in china um i think that the, the one product i know that might be china manufactured was a multimeter that we have uh in our inventory but um the tool business in general professional tool business in general has become a global business so the idea uh, you know, 50 years ago where everything is made here. Uh, you think about, let's say, a Craftsman um, on, a, on that level or a Snap-on or a Matco. Uh, all these companies now have uh, a majority of the manufacturing happening happening outside of uh, the U.S. market. And sure. it's not It's not necessarily uh, price-driven. I mean, there's obviously that factor. Uh, when, when things can be manufactured as good or better for less money, then that makes sense, right? It makes fiscal sense to do that. Sure. But, uh, we've taken an approach of let's find who makes 
uh, fantastic pliers. So mm-hmm. NWS out of Germany uh, makes fantastic pliers, mm-hmm. right? So they 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 manufacture our pliers for us. Uh, mm-hmm. We have parts made in, uh, we have tools made in Belgium, we have hammers made in Italy, mm-hmm. um, and then you take the Taiwan factor to it, um, and uh, any, any Taiwanese person that you call Chinese is gonna probably punch you, punch you in the face. Uh, they, they completely look at themselves as uh, a completely different country governed by the same, you know, uh, you know, government, I guess. And, uh, but there's a level of quality coming out of Taiwan, which is why the professional brands have, have sought out cold forged metal in, in Taiwan and mm. it's on par with Germany and the U S. Mm-hmm. So you take that approach. Uh, and you know, if we, we talked about this earlier, uh, about being obsessed, uh, you're obsessed with what you're doing. That's why you have the, the fan base that you have and the following you have. Uh, all that we've done since 2015 is obsess over how how do we bring in a professional tool that's on par with the the brands that we feel are this antiquated model of doing it wrong, um, and and their, and their inability and unwillingness to to change to the times. Uh, it's 2020. This is your tool truck. You know, it's, this is it's not 1970. Seven or eighty anymore. So doing so. it, doing it. The intent was to do it a little differently than do the, it differently than uh, the model uh, that everybody follows. The, the only model I'd say that we we follow is that, like a Snap On or like a Mac O or, or Mac, we've taken and we're taking our manufacturing to the people who do it best. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's that's the approach from the manufacturing side. But the, the, I think when we know we, early on, we get asked a lot, like, where your tools made? And typically when somebody is, is asking us that question, they're not asking where our tools are made. They're asking if our tools are made in China because there's this stigma that if they don't know it, mm-hmm. if they've never heard of it, oh, then it must be Chinese junk. Uh, so I think that was our, our first hurdle. Uh, right, I think a lot of, of that is just a question when you don't know what other questions to ask. Right? Yeah. You wouldn't know what else to ask, and so you're going to ask that question. I, I get that all the time. You know, they, well, I'm doing this Milwaukee project, and people are like, "Oh, no, China." I don't care where something's made, as long as it's good. I don't care where it's made. Right. I'm going to vet it from that point. Um, yeah, I'd love it if everything was made in you know Florida, in my hometown. Yep. You know, then I'd benefit from that directly. But the, it's just not the way the world works. Uh, and so I, I think you guys have said it best that it you know it's global in nature and that we're going to have products made and curate Ford, products. Ford trucks and GM cars are global. I mean, they're, mm-hmm. yeah. they, they're American brand. They're American brand. Uh, they're not a hundred percent everything manufactured in the, in the U S. So, 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 you know, some of the hand tools are, are, there's a mix of where they're producing. I think a lot of them, it says it on the tool, doesn't it? I think it says where the country of origin on some of them, like the pliers or the NWS stuff, yeah. I think. The pliers it does, yes. Yeah. Um, and, and, and once again, I, I just don't think it really matters all that much. Um, it, you put it in your hand, you touch it, feel it, use it, and see how it works. And, you know, one of the one of the things that intrigued me most about the Sonic system, uh, when I first saw your cabinets at your house, I wasn't 100% in love, but right. I was in love with the, the inlays. Yeah. And then when you look at the ecosystem, you put it all together, and then eventually I just bought some cabinets and the fit and finish and how they all go together and the packaging. It's clear that, you know, the, we, we were talking about this earlier on the other side, there's a there's uh, when let's say somebody sends you a detail spray and it's um you know it's got a crappy label on it and it's in a cheap bottle and there's a cheap sprayer that to me is a very likely predictor of the quality of the product that's going to be in the bottle uh and so you know sonic in general what really intrigued me was the the, the ecosystem the packaging the uh the how stuff was put on a pallet uh, when you open up the foam inlays, they're all um, shrink wrapped, cellophane wrapped. You know, they're all with a with an inventory sheet, uh, and then all the tools are you know where they should be, and you know, and all indicated very specifically. Uh, and when you put that whole ecosystem together, it just works so well. It just it 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 panders so much to what I'm interested in, rather than worried about you know and say whether they're lying to you, whether it's made in the USA or not. Right, you know, it's just not not all that important to me. Plus, I don't want to buy some stuff from some dude in the truck. It's just not not my style. Yeah, and our, we've never. That's the thing that we've been pretty transparent on uh, from the manufacturing standpoint. Uh, but there's been that there, there's a hyper focus on doing so many things better um, uh, that we feel that you know there the current the current industry 
is almost too complacent. They, they are missing the boat when it comes to leveraging technology. Some of them can't. Their business model won't allow it. When you've got franchise owners, mm-hmm. how do you tell all your franchise owners, hey, guys, you know, the t- sign of the times is the Internet. All right, we're going to online sales. We're going to reduce our pricing uh, because we're not, we don't have the middleman. They, how do you tell those franchise owners that we're putting you out of business? So, Yeah, yeah. And so um, I think that uh, it's, it's very, uh, what, uh, one of the things that intrigued me so much, other than all this fit finish and all this stuff together, was the um, you could just see it from the site, even the original site. Um, the website that there's some smart guys behind it and then when I found out it was the guys I didn't know Steven I didn't mm-hmm. know Colby I didn't know Harrison I didn't know any of you guys um, but when I found out you know it's you know a bunch of ex Auburn guys and you know ex APR guys that are that are representing this brand um, I knew that you know eventually that this would become a extremely well known company in the US uh, and I knew that I wanted it in my garage and that kind of led to, to how this happened so just to kind of cue everybody how I even got in on this. Um, you know, I started the Facebook group. We probably had a couple thousand people when you, Scott, mm-hmm. when you uh, joined the group. And one at the time when I was doing this, and I've railed against this many times on this podcast, in that at the time there were a lot of people that were taking advantage of it. A lot of detailers, a lot of uh, detailing suppliers. This was before I was really selling anything um, uh, or had just started selling stuff they you know, it would be taken advantage of and that pe- people weren't doing the work and they would come in and they'd say here's what i have it's better than what matt's talking about and um and here's how you buy it from me mm-hmm. so people would come in and leverage this platform that i had worked my face off to create some of it by accident but the, yep. the effort is still real and people were coming in and just just disregarding all of that completely and and they would do it under the spirit that well, that's not what this place is about. They tell me what my house was designed for. Uh, and so you came in at that same time and very cleverly showed your cabinets in your garage and your, and I knew what you were doing and I'm cool with it. I was cool with it. I even said to you, I said, I, I know what you're doing. I remember you messaged me and said, hey, nice tactful way of showing me respect <laughs> right. by not just coming in and blatantly saying yeah you you were pro- whether or not you were selling or not didn't matter well, i was you, selling you got <laughs> but you selling. got the message uh, or, or i got the message yep. um and uh, but it was it was um it was you provide a value so mm-hmm. there was an exchange in value there in that that the people whether or not they were buying something or not are going to become a sonic customer really didn't matter you were telling your story and telling your case for why these are cool uh, and so then um uh, you'd invited me over when i was doing the adam lz project to come check out the tools yep. uh, in your garage and i come check it out and i was you know i was sitting there playing with you and adam rob chatting and i'm you know lifting up the foam inlays and taking out each tool and feeling the ratchets and I have never had I never had a high end set of tools. I have a hodgepodge of you've guys seen it at my, at my house, a hodgepodge of you know old craftsman stuff and mm-hmm. some Home Depot husky stuff and uh, just some you know some a hodgepodge of all different things put together. And so the concept of the idea that I could buy like a whole drawer of matching screwdrivers, have it all labeled where they go, uh, is just so consistent. What with what everything that I'd ever been interested in. Uh, and so then from there, you started to make the case for me. I forget when we, when we did Adam LZ's garage. Um, so that would have been what 2000, probably mid, mid to late 2017. Yeah. You had SEMA coming up and I said, Hey, listen, let's, I yeah. know that Colby was going to SEMA. Yep. And try to connect you guys. At yeah. SEMA. And he c- clearly wasn't super interested in it. You know, he wasn't well, and, interested and, in that idea. And yeah. we went and had, had had lunch quickly and I tried to explain to him what my vision was uh and uh and you know they the guys basically said no you know the first year right and understandably they you keep in mind we have several uh people come to us I mean we have it probably happens daily we have somebody reach out to us to sponsor this or yeah. hey I've got this following I provide this kind of content we're gonna I'm gonna do so much for you uh I'm gonna sell your I'm gonna sell more tools for you than anybody else mm-hmm. so we we in early on, right, we're, we're still trying to uh, uh, gain our bearing. So know. I'm trying to overcome that, you know, that that yep. negative experience you guys have had with influencers uh, in the past by spending pay, paying them a bunch of money. They're not giving you what you're wanting, and um, yeah, you bought your you bought your first set of cabinets. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. 
yeah, you gave me a discount, but I, I bought it, you know, and yep. um, and I found that um, I buying stuff without asking anything for free one gives me the freedom to say what needs to be said yep. uh and then and then you know secondly uh shows some good faith that hey i'm i'm willing to put some investment in this as well yep. and so th that first meeting with colby you know he, he you know i could tell he was interested but still not convinced yep. uh, and then you worked on him for another year and then the next sema the following year in 2018 is when we kind of came to the conclusion, and then I said, then I put my money where my mouth was, and I bought, you know, a thirty well, was, foot array. And of there was a few people who purchased from us um, because of your site, right? So right. Nick Wong out of Orlando, he mm -hmm. was uh, one of the guys that uh, he never heard of us until he had gone to your website, and mm -hmm. he ended up purchasing like a twelve thousand dollar array of, of MSS. So there was some of the some of the convincing happened organically, uh, right? Because we were seeing sales because of your content, right? right? So that was. For Colby, that was a that was it almost became like a no brainer, you know what I yeah. mean for him. So, and so then I came up eventually. Um, we started selling this, selling the stuff, and <laughs> right off the bat, um, um, you guys had kind of decided to transition primarily to MSS Plus, uh, and so right off Correct. the bat, um, the MSS line, you guys had kind of sent a lot of it back to to because you were going to go narrow and deep into MSS Plus, and I was begging you, no, 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 we need to. We need MSS as well, right? Uh, and and originally, uh, when I originally started talking, MSS was like thirty or forty percent more expensive. And then you know, so now as you see, MSS today is like thirty percent less than it was, you know, when it was the sole line. Yep. Uh, and that comes, I'm guessing, from production improvements and things like that, and volume discounts of them making more cabinets. Uh, but that that was a big big point of um, I think why. Uh, the gap between my entry level line and the sonic stuff is not not as big of a delta mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, and then when we turned it loose I, I don't think you guys expected what I what I was telling you I was telling them but yeah. I don't think it, you believe me I, I, but, I, I, but, you know, but Colby certainly didn't there was some yeah. skepticism obviously but I, I think that the thing that that convinced me is that I have ADD, and to get me to watch any video for more than 30 seconds is a miracle. And it, for me to sit there and watch you spend five minutes adjusting your mic, and I'm still, I'm like, how am I still watching this dude on uh, washing a wheel on his car? Uh, and so I'm thinking that there's a, you found, you almost uh, proved uh, what is given in marketing as being like, you guys are wrong. There's There are people who will engage for an hour over you telling a, a literally a story that somebody else might tell in in a, in a minute and a half. So, mm -hmm. uh, and and because I saw some traction immediately um, from content from that that single post where I posted in my garage, um, and uh, got some traction from that, then uh, I think at that point um, the skepticism at the higher level of Colby and Steven, that, that went away. Uh, but yeah, it was, I, I, I mean, I'm, I don't want to say I believed you believed you. I had hope. I'm a yeah. hopeful, you know, optimistic person. Um, but I also am a risk taker and I was, I was like, I wanted to take the risk. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's take the risk with this guy. So let, let's, let's uh, go dig into a few questions. We'll keep telling the story, but um, uh, Keith uh, Tippett's asked a question for Scott and Harrison. Placed my first order for Sonic Tools a couple of months ago for both Sonic MSS cabinets and a couple of foam inlay tool sets. I'm very happy with the cabinets and tools. I wanted to know if there is any chance of Sonic developing six-point sockets in SAE like they have for metric. So tell me a little bit about, um, you know, the SAE stuff obviously isn't very popular in Europe, uh, and so that line has been rather limited. What's, uh, what's the story there? Well, that's a great question in the sense that um, once we went down this path of aviation and, you know, really became a prominent force uh, from a hand tool and storage solution standpoint with aviation, anything from down to a uh, a small FBO at a, a municipal airport up to uh, a major MRO or a regional airline. What's FBO? Um, uh, f fixed base operations. Okay. Uh, MRO is uh, maintenance, repair, and overhaul. So if you can uh, imagine an MRO with aviation being like a an independent um, automotive shop that can do pretty much everything. They can put a transmission in. They Got can, it. Okay. Uh, up to even being able to do body work. Uh, so on the airline standpoint, they're a, a repair station for airlines. 
Uh, some some uh, repairs are managed by the airlines themselves. So you work for, uh, let's say, PSA Airlines. Mm-hmm. You work out of their hangar on their planes all the time. Uh, you might work for Duncan Aviation out of Lincoln, Nebraska, where they are general aviation, business aviation, and you could be working on Learjet, Citation, uh, Falcon Jets, Gulf Streams. Um, so you take, uh, the, on the aviation side of the world, the six-point uh, socket question comes up, um, and I think there some of the, some of the education that happens is, like, we have a flank drive system on our 12-point socket, so it's a flank drive socket. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, the advantage of flank drive is the way that it grabs a bolt or a nut. Uh, so the, the opportunity of, a, of you rounding a nut or even grabbing onto a nut that's already, a bolt that's already been kind of rounded, the, the, the chances of that slipping are minimized by this flank drive design, right? And that's a design that, uh, that most people, most professional tools are using. So what, is, what does flank mean? Is that the cir- circumference or how the, how the 12 point, because you think about it, you know, a 12 point ratchet has little teeth, right? It has yeah, 12 it's, little it's teeth. the design of that. It's just the way that it grabs those teeth, grab the, grab the bolt. Uh, and so a six point is truly like a six, six sided right. socket that fits perfectly over a six sided bolt. Mm-hmm. And we, we get the question more in the aviation world because of um, the precision, mm-hmm. the tolerances, and there's no margin of error uh, in the aviation world. The things can't, they, can't, they cannot make mistakes with stuff. So when something has to be torqued to a certain level, it's torqued exactly to those specs and it's torqued with a torque wrench that has been calibrated in the last six months. Mm-hmm. Or an automotive guy might have a torque wrench that hasn't been calibrated in two years, right? Right. Um, so, you uh, to answer his question, we'll get to his question. Uh, are we going to make them? There is uh, no immediate uh, goal for us to make that. And keep in mind, we can we can manufacture basically any tool that's not protected by some kind of proprietary, uh, you know, ownership, you know, patent. Mm-hmm. Um, the but when we do it, we're not making you know five hundred sockets. Right. Of, of a certain size. We're making 5,000, 10,000 sockets. So we'd have to have a really, really solid case. Like where there's the demand for it uh, makes a case for like, we have to produce this. We have, you know, uh, 80% of our customers are asking for a six, a six point SAE socket. Mm-hmm. So it's a great question. Uh, I don't think that there's any uh, immediate um, call for us to, to make those. Um, and again, like I said, our 12 point in the aviation world, our 12 points, so there's been no no pushback at all on our 12 point SAE sockets mm-hmm. not doing the job. Hmm. So, uh, and uh, continuing on that topic of tools, uh, Ian Ford asks, and there was another couple of guys that asked this up earlier, uh, does Sonic offer ratchet socket drives and wrenches with high tooth count for lower degree rotation in tight spaces? Uh, we do. We have a 72 tooth count rotating head ratchet. Uh, the new ratchet. Did you, did he see the new ratchet earlier? Mm-hmm. You take a look mm-hmm. at that. Yeah. So that the the ratchet that uh, our next ratchet that we have replacing our our workhorse 45 tooth ratchet uh, is a 60 tooth ratchet, and it actually because of the paw design and the ratchet it actually uh, will hold as much torque as a lower tooth count. So, mm-hmm. answer this question. Yes, we have. We, we're we're not building 90 tooth ratchets. Um, there is there a, a need there might be a unique uh, instance where you have to have something that high but for the most part you're going to lose so much torque ability um, uh, on a high tooth ratchet mm-hmm. uh, and there are some design things that, that can be implemented like what we've done with our 60 tooth ratchet um, that you can get as much load and much torque on that on a higher tooth count so your mm. angle your degree uh, uh, between where it grabs a tooth um, is is uh, lower and so though for those detailers on the on the 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 live stream here we're talking about the gear set right and how many how many teeth are on the on the gear set and the more teeth you have the the uh, i guess the less it, of a swing you have between right, when you grab so between the click uh, you know so as you're clicking or ratcheting yeah. um, you'd have uh, you'd have the ability to turn it less and then start to yeah, an idea like if you have a space where you've got a ratchet and, and you you can only go up and down like this to 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 make that mm-hmm. uh bolt or nut loosen uh if the, the the lower the space you have obviously the higher tooth count you need to be able to get right. in there right that makes yeah makes sense uh, let's see what else is everybody saying somebody's saying glad that you don't have ties to china again i you know i don't think that even if things are made in china i mean some you can still I mean, th- there's more precision. I mean, Apple stuff is made in China. I mean, you can still have precise stuff done. Well, you know, the problem is if you think about, we well, use an analogy like Kia and Hyundai, right? So Hyundai for 
for years was this throwaway car, a joke of a car, I guess, and, you know, back in the 80s. And, um, you know, they're making awesome cars nowadays uh, that, that are, you know, indisputable from a quality standpoint. Um, and China has stepped up its game, but because you've had brands out there that are, like, incredibly inexpensive, literally a throwaway tool. Like, right. you, you buy something to use it twice, knowing it's going to fail, but it's okay because I just needed this one time. So they're, China has to overcome the stigma of, of quality, and they're, they're starting to. Um, and there are some, there are some you know, tools that are made in China that actually aren't, aren't bad, but it's still uh, until their game has been stepped up um, immensely, there's no, there's no desire for us to, to go to that part of Asia uh, as a manufacturing Mm-hmm. from a s- manufacturing source. So um, one one guy asked, what cars do you guys drive? That's a, oh, that's an awesome question. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, I, w- I will tell uh, your audience that um, we obsess over a lot. We obsess over our model, our, our tools. Uh, we have a lot of car guys. We have a couple people who aren't car guys, and they, they literally get ragged on on a daily basis. I'm referring to Patrick who drives a, a certain car that has a CVT transmission that I just cannot relate to. Who's probably watching this right yeah, now. Yeah, he's probably watching this right now. Mm-hmm. So, Patrick, it's time to step up your game, buddy. Um, I, I drive a Genesis. I've been uh, an Audi Volkswagen Mercedes guy for a long time. So I've had, I've, in fact, I own the fastest Golf R uh, that was built by APR. No one has beat my time or, or matched my half-mile, quarter-mile time in my, uh, from a manual transmission standpoint. Uh, Blake, he's driving a, an Audi S4. Uh, you're driving a Raptor, uh, but you're Gen uh, 2 Raptor. Gen, Gen 2, 2 Raptor. Two. Um, Colby has an M3, and uh, Stephen has a. Uh, he's got some pretty nice vehicles. Uh, w- one of them being like an Alfa Romeo uh, Giulia Quadriplogio that has been tuned. Um, so we we definitely have some car guys in our in our stable, and uh, uh, it's part of what drives I think some of the passion on our end. Mm-hmm. Um, is that there's a lot of people we talk to that we we like cars, we like the maintenance side of stuff, and we like to support car guys, uh, and we are for the most part car car guys. So that's I think that's a common concern of a lot of people is that like you're buying products from people that don't like they don't care. They're just selling it just because they got to sell something, and that bothers me a lot too personally. Is like I'd rather. I'd rather be in relationship with passionate people, and so pretty much everybody at you know the vast other than maybe some of the you know the the the, the staff that just need a job. The vast majority right. of the people there are going to be are interested in cars and tools and and other types of tools and things like that. It makes you an enthusiast, which then I think makes you a better salesperson. So somebody uh, Edgar's asking, uh, I'm a newbie and not familiar with Sonic. What is their niche? Oh wow, well, um, that's a great question too. So uh, I would say our niche is that we are a single source provider. Uh, if you think about the things that you found attractive when you saw the, the cabinet system and tools, so we manufacture the cabinet system, the mm-hmm. storage solution. We manufacture the foam. We manufacture the tools. Um, and, and now we're doing laser etching, which is something that spawned off from a need from the aviation world. Uh, we have the inventory control book. So we. There's a we, we see what is wrong uh, with the existing models, like I mentioned earlier, um, and because none of none of us at Sonic have come from this industry, so we don't have any any preconceived uh, notions about how this how this tool business should be run and what a customer expects, mm-hmm. um, and so because we didn't come into this like well this is how we do it this is how we've always done it. We're like, no, we, it needs to be this way. There needs to be less friction between when a customer wants to buy something and buy it. There needs to be educated uh, specialists when somebody calls in and, 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 and needs is, is trying to figure out, hey, I'm entry-level mechanic uh, working for Honda, and I'm trying to figure out what to buy. And we have 180 different variations of, of these foam uh, inserts that you can buy. Um, but when you talk to us, uh, we've done our diligence. We know what the industry demands, and so we can guide a, a technician, a, a, a consumer down the right path that, that fits them. Um, and uh, from a business-to-business standpoint, enterprise standpoint, uh, you know, we've gained some business um, where, uh, let's say, an airline has eight locations, eight different hubs, eight mm-hmm. different cities. If they go with a tool truck model, each each location, if they have an issue, warranty issue 
has to deal with that territory person. Mm, Where with yeah. Sonic Tools, you, it's one phone call, it's one email, it's clicking on one link in our website to warranty a tool that takes you a couple minutes. Um, and so our, our, I guess our niche is that we are the only single source solution provider that uh, is equally obsessed about doing everything right uh, as they are about wanting to have the best stuff in their garage, have the, the cleanest car, uh, best tools in their toolbox. Harrison, talk to me about um, warranty. How does that work? So let's say I have a 45 tooth ratchet and I'm you know standing on it to try to break uh, an old you know old bolt loose on my uh, stinky old Japanese car and it breaks so you grab the pole from behind the building and yeah put on and the end of that ratchet stand, and stand on, on it and i'm yeah. sort of jumping <laughs> up and down on it and i don't of course i'm not going to tell you that but um um and it's uh, break it right it's free spinning uh and uh, it has a lifetime warranty right mm -hmm. so how do i get a new one how does that work so all of our products carry a lifetime warranty um and our warranty process you know compared to the current model which is either you go to the store and return it or you get wait on the tool truck to come back around and return it uh, we made it easy. Your your phone is your tool truck. Or your phone is your retail store. So um, you go on our website. You go to our warranty exchange portal. Mm -hmm. You enter your information with two pictures of the tool. Mm -hmm. uh, from there, it's it's no hassle. We take care of it. Within 24 hours, the tool is processed, um, and it's in the mail on its way to you. Mm -hmm. So we try to minimize any sort of lag time, and um, you know we. Do I send the old one back? Uh, it depends. So you know, if it's stuff like a screwdriver um, that you broke the tip off of, mm -hmm. just throw it in the trash. It's not worth anything to you or me. Yeah. Um, obviously, torque wrenches or you know uh, ratchets. We obviously want to know what failed. Mm -hmm. You know, if you if you break the tip off a screwdriver, I can pretty much guarantee you're probably using it as a chisel or something of that nature. But you know, some of our our the the more expensive items that are built to last. Um, not saying screwdrivers aren't, but you know what I'm saying. You know, I'd, I'd, we want to know what exactly happened, and we want to break it open and, and, and find out the fault point so that we can perfect it for the sure. future. Um, someone asked here, would uh, Sonic ever branch uh, into power tools if the opportunity arises? No, no. I mean, uh, actually, um, we have looked at that. Uh, you know, you and I talked about that earlier, you know, looking at the Milwaukee stuff. So uh, it is something that we've thought about, but at the same time, every time we Every time somebody asks us or put poses this opportunity, th I think that what we fall back on is that we're so focused on being really, really good at a certain part of this industry where you've got brands that want to make everything. They'll they'll lay, they'll put their label on everything, w regardless of who manufactured it. They'll throw their name on it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not going to just throw our name on a, a rebranded uh, Chinese drill or you know whatever. We're not going to do that. So for us to go down that path, and, and, and it has been looked at. I mean, I, I can't go into a whole bunch of details because I, I don't know where where that stands given the current uh, you know climate of our economy and stuff, with coronavirus. But um, Every time the discussion comes up, uh, you know, our executive uh, leadership is like, you know, guys, we do this like so well. Let's let's stay focused on what we're doing well. Let's do it better. Let's let's uh, provide, you know, figure out how we provide a better service, a lower friction. Uh, and once uh, we feel that we've exhausted all of our opportunity there, then we'll take a look at it. Or if somebody, you know, if somebody came to us and said, then listen, we're going to put in a $5 million order with you. Uh, let's say it's an airline or something. Mm -hmm. um, but we want a, a single branded product. Um, we would maybe maybe expedite that process of, of how we go about finding a, a quality manufacturer of a, of a, of a, uh, a drill or, you know, electric ratchet or something. Incorporate into that. Yeah. Here's another... Um Another question um, that that uh, I'm less inter interested about the, the discounting, but he says that does Sonic have any veteran programs to get started in the automotive industry? So let, I'm thinking more of um, we talked about this this morning about uh, doing uh, B I A E uh, packages yep. and and or well, I'm going to be working very specifically with you guys. Part of the reason why we met here this week uh, was to sit down and start talking about building out an infrastructure or a step a step by step way to build out a you know a a, a grouping of tools. So um, talk to me a little bit about the 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 platform to to for like beginners up through up through expert. 
level. Well, so to answer this question, it, we do uh, have a veterans discount of 15%. So uh, you you know you have a copy of DD-214 or a, a military ID, then you're going to get a 15% discount on everything but our sale items. So it's not a discount you can apply to an already discounted or sell uh, price product. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, speaking specifically to what this, this BIA basic uh, intermediate advance and, and expert level setup. So we've already been, the irony of what you brought up this morning, what we're talking about, what you want to do um, is that for over 12 months now, we've been working uh, with some automotive groups and some autom automotive dealerships uh, to basically make make the whole process a little bit less confusing uh, mm -hmm. and less paralyzing like we talked about like you know so you, there's so much options with us that it can you can have paralysis when it comes to trying to decide what you want to buy uh, and because of our relationships with OEMs um, and, and what we've done in North America just in a short five-year period uh, we have all the data we have the leverage to to know now internally like what is the ideal setup for a quick lube guy going. This, I'm not again. I'm talking about the professional world, right? Mechanics. So, you're working on your BIA for the obsessed garage uh, client, which is going to align very closely with our BIA. Yeah. Um, but so, th we working on a pathway that you have a basic setup that you come in, you start work, um, and so if a military guy. Typically, the military guys are experienced, uh, and we see a lot of military guys. Those are the guys that go straight to our advanced set. Mm -hmm. They've been 20 years, you know, heavy truck mechanic or aviation mechanic, and uh, they're going right into that. But if they're a four-year veteran who, who did a stint as an infantryman and, you know, um, and get, got out, and now they're, they went to a trade school or something and starting out as a, a technician, uh, they'll get a 15% discount. Um, but we do have uh, entry-level setups uh, that have been designed, and we have some that are in, in almost done that Harrison has been working you know, Harrison Colby, I, it's not uncommon to see those guys in the office at 10, 11 o'clock at night on a whiteboard uh, drawing out plans for a, a basic. For those of you who are wanted, B is for beginner, I is for intermediate, A is for advanced, E is for expert. Sorry, right. we, we're throwing out acronyms here. Yeah, basic, intermediate, advanced. And so one of the visions I've had, so you guys have already been working on this, but one of the visions I had was that I wanted to, f first of all, I, you know, I think of things top down. So I think of the ultimate and then I kind of work my way down from there uh, and so I want personally I want every tool mm -hmm. like every tool that's made that's the goal that's that's the, the goal I have even if I'm not going to use it I might need it uh, and so I want to know how many tools the Sonic have uh, and then I want a spreadsheet of that and then I want to buy every single one of them mm -hmm. I want them all laying out on the table uh, and then from there is where I want to sort of work with you guys. We're going to work on possibly building the Obsessed Garage Foam Inlays uh, and uh, and building out a line. And we'll have a video up on YouTube of us sort of having that conversation of thinking through how, how we would offer that. Uh, but to have, you know, beginner set. And so let's say the beginner set, let's say it's, I don't know, let's, just round, let's pick a number, $1,000 for a beginner set. But the beginner set will have subsections of, you know, certain types of tools that you could maybe you can't swing the thousand bucks but you could swing 200 so it's subsectioned out and then of course we'll have a la carte setups uh, and the, the the goal that I would like to have is so that way you could you could progress from beginner into the intermediate and add another two or three hundred tools to your intermediate set and then add another two or three hundred tools to your advanced set and add another th three four five hundred tools to get to the expert set or the full-on you know og spec set we'll call it and so uh the the what we're going to be working on is figuring out how do we make that progressively economical how do we make that so that um, because right now i have sets that are you know fifteen thousand dollars it's just most people are never going to get that in their life uh, and so how do we how do we kind of build in infrastructure around that making sure people what i want to do is make videos on the screwdrivers and talk about the teeth and talk about the type of you know type of sockets and talk about all your different options and t-handles and all kinds of things uh, so that people have that information available to them so that's something we're going to we're going to work yeah. on and the, the the drive for it on on our end from a from an enterprise standpoint is that we have dealerships now that are seeing the value of uh providing tools so obviously the model forever has been a technician goes to school goes into debt with a truck has mm -hmm. you know tens of thousands of dollars in debt with a truck uh, and they provide the tools and it's 
because of a shortage initially it started because of a shortage of technicians and what the future uh, what the forecast looks like for technicians mm-hmm. uh, a skilled trade that you've got dealerships you've got airlines that are seeing a value of now purchasing and they own tools. they're owning the tools yeah. right and then you have inventory control systems and shoot each one comes with a sheet with all the stuff and the foam inlays allow it to be manageable yeah, well they wanted they wanted us to create a, a pathway system so hey listen if i have a guy come in as a loop tech uh i need to make sure that he can transition he or she can transition from loop tech to flat rate and the tool set is the, the basically the tools grow with them so that's mm. where the bia came from is that it was a a byproduct of of a a, a demand um, from our our enterprise customers um, Matt Duffy asks, uh, I know how Matt feels about sales. Sonic r- does run sales, you know, quite a bit. Um, we can offer those through OG. It's just that when they run it on sale, they wipe out all the margin. And so I yeah. can sell it as a pass through. Um, but you know, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt or help me if you buy it direct or buy it from me either, either way we can do it. If you wanted to make it simple. Is he asking if we like sales? Yeah. Or are you just saying he like how you feel about sales? No, he was asking if he could buy it from me still support obsessed garage yeah. well, and you can i just don't get anything from it other than you know well i would say any any, any sale that anybody sees um if they're any inclination to buy tools from us take advantage of the sales i because i personally i'd like to see at some point um that we get away from it i think it, it doesn't really devalue our brand right now because we're still still growing you know uh, brand mm-hmm. awareness and stuff but uh, the I think the drive because of the demand and the understanding of our brand uh, is going to allow us to truly get the full value for uh, from a, a, a price standpoint. We're, we're always going to be affordable. We're always going to be more affordable than uh, the, our, our apples to apples quality comparison competition. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we're the the sales are something that uh, not necessarily a necessity right now as much as they are something that we're using to drive awareness put our tools in people's hands um, well and sometimes you guys are doing it you know, via excess inventory on a particular oh, yeah, product course. or yeah, something like yep. that like anybody anyone yep, would have of course so we're going to be we're going to be working on starter kits you know that that's something that I'm, I'm super interested in doing is being able i think that's my value prop is to be able to touch and feel things and then explain what i might like and what what i might find you know interesting or what I would want in my cabinet than other people, you know, other people do as well. Um, so let's talk a little bit about um, the construction of the tools. Um, they have a, a much different finish. Well, you know, do you, any idea why they chose the kind of matte looking finish? You know, some of the some of the wrenches and stuff. They look they look quite a bit different than a lot of other tools. Uh, I think the biggest reason is because uh, there is some tolerance stuff from European cars, right? So anytime that you, like, let, let's take a wrench, a uh, combination wrench, right? Mm-hmm. Our, our process is basically a four-step process uh, to make that wrench versus an eight to 12-step process to make uh, one of our competitors' wrenches. Um, and, and if you take one of our, our wrenches and, and compare it to, uh, let's just say a snap-on, you know, 14 millimeter combination wrench, our wrench is gonna be thinner um, uh, because we don't have, we don't have to start out with a thicker core. Like, so when you, cold forge a, a tool and then you cool it down you heat it up cool it down heat it up the the uh the, 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 let's say the raw wrench has to be thicker so that at the end of that process you still have the strength and rigid, rigidity that you would you would have from the beginning so mm-hmm. because we don't we do not apply heat uh to our tool which happens during the chroming process um w- we can make our wrenches thinner and then actually have them be as stronger stronger than our competitors wrenches so there's uh, the, the it's not needed. Uh, it's some, sometimes it's more of a, a, an aesthetic thing uh, mm-hmm. for some people. Um, we have found uh, that in the aviation world, uh, like uh, we were at uh, a, a major brand airline up in Atlanta recently, and uh, they had some of our competitors' wrenches that were literally brand new that already had chrome flaking off. And in the aviation world, they call it FOD, foreign object, object damage. Mm. Uh, and in in that world, if you have a chrome tool that has any, I'm talking a smidgen of chrome that just flaked off, that tool is now, it's 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 inoperable. It has to be turned in and replaced. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, personally, I like I love a matte or a satin finish tool. I think they feel nice. Um, but the the idea behind it was was strictly um, a a a desire to make something that's functional over let's say pretty if people think chrome is pretty 
It's more of it's a it's it's function over form. So molecular bond. What's that? <laughs> molecular bond. Of, yep. of not having to heat it up, cool it down. Yeah, it's a chemical finish. Cool so our, our wrenches are chemically a machine finish. There's no chroming plating, or yeah, yeah, right. no plating happening to it. You know, um I think uh, I think one of the common misconceptions that I hear people when you know when I'm making videos or seeing comments of uh, you know people are very territorial about tools. Very, it's al almost like politics. Like you you choose and you stay there for life. And you know, I appreciate that. Yep. Um, and you, it, it's like unless you disparage what others are interested in, then it, then you're not like a, a real die hard right and so what I've found is that uh, and what I want to make people understand is that you know you have snap on matco um, uh, would be your you know American professional lines mm -hmm. uh, and then of course you in you know, Europe you have Facom and you have you know okay. several you know several other you know wear tools and stuff like that um, Knipix makes you know sort of you have some specialty tools some European tools um, also you'd have um, a Hazette you know, in Europe, and, uh, and 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 Sonic is in with those, and I think a lot of people, because they haven't heard the name, they lump it in with, uh, you know, with uh, with a Tang or a, you know a Chinese-made mm -hmm. specific tool. Uh, whereas um, I I look at Sonic as an ecosystem. So the thing that interested me most about Sonic is the ecosystem and all the attention to detail outside of just the tools that really interest me most. And then if I take a Snap-on, a Sonic, a Matco, or a, a Facom, and I put them all together, and I'm looking at them all, and they all look relatively similar, give or take a few finish differences. Uh, and then to me, the thing that really pushed me over the top was the foam inlay stuff. Mm -hmm. That attention to detail of how you put them together in a cabinet uh, just super intrigued me. So one of the questions somebody asked was, can I can I just buy the foam inlays and put my own tools in it? And if you think about this logically, it won't fit, right? Correct. See? Yeah, they're designed for our tools. So there are other systems where you could take a picture of your phone and they'll send you the mm -hmm. the inlay, or you could t buy some Kaizen foam, which I've done in the past, and cut it out, or do something like Tool Grid. But it's hard to explain unless you have that. I mean, how do they make the inlays? Is it CNC? Is it laser cut? CNC. And, and so if you don't have the ability to have the tools in the spot that you made yourself as a corporation and then lay them out in, a, in, an, as, in, as an, efficient, in, a, in an efficient method, you can get more tools in. And, and it's just not the same, right? I mean, Correct. Unless you're starting from scratch with your own tools, unless you have the tools there and the machines and the CAD software in order to do this, you don't get the precision with the with the inlay. Correct. Yeah, and you speaking of like efficiency on that, uh, there's a, there's a few companies obviously that offer you know, foam as an option, foam shadowing as an option. Um, and uh, I remember seeing a snap on box in, in a school in uh, Alameda College, Alameda College of Aviation in uh, Oakland, California, and they they were originally a snap on you know kind of promoter. Uh, agreed to get agreed to get our box in there, and we have a, a one third. We had a one third uh, wrench foam uh, that had fourteen wrenches in it. With one third meaning a small, our small size foam, mm -hmm. um, and our small foam held fourteen um, SAE combination wrenches in it. And I laid that foam down on top of the shadowed snap-on box, and it covered up three wrenches in the same space. So there's a you can you can foam shadow a box. Um, it does you no good if you you we can fit probably four times, five times the tools uh, in the same space. And that, again, that just goes to us obsessing over doing everything the best. Right? Yeah. Doing, we, yeah, multiple companies offer foam, but we do it the best. So uh, here's a great question. I don't know the answer to. Um, uh, Bryce always yells at me for me leaving my torque wrench, torque, you know, whatever I left it at. You know, left, yeah, I'm yeah, just leaving it on 90. I'm like, I'm going to use it at 90 again. I'm just leaving it at 90. Yeah. So um, um, uh, he asks, uh, can you ask uh, the Sonic team about torque wrench accuracy tolerances compared to Snap-on or Matco or others? He's interested in the two-way. And also, how long before calibration is needed? And then how do you do it? How do you calibrate it? So um, from a tolerance standpoint, our torque wrenches come within a 3% uh, 
accuracy rate. So there's, we, we, we promise, we guarantee they'll be within 3%. Um, I'll give you an example, Duncan Aviation. Um, again, uh, I mentioned aviation because of uh, how specific they are with tolerances and stuff. So the, their, their allowable range is 4%. Mm-hmm. Um, and they have a cal lab, a calibration lab uh, uh, on site. Uh, so they can calibrate their own tools. They calibrate their tools every six months. Mm-hmm. I, I can't tell you if they do every six months and it's based on like, let's say how many times a torque wrench was used. I just know that their their policy is every six months is a rotation of tools and it's everything from multimeters to torque wrench. Anything that can be calibrated, uh, ratcheting, crimping pliers will go through there and they've got all the tools and calibration tools that they need uh, to recalibrate if needed those tools. And they took, they bought tor- torque wrenches from us uh, they were buying torque wrenches, torque wrenches from a competitor, uh, and this is to me. It's this is almost you're gonna you're gonna appreciate this, Matt. So, we were asked, hey, if we buy a torque wrench from you, brand new, because we buy torque wrenches from this company that we've been talking about, uh, we've mentioned a few times in this conversation, and when we get a new torque wrench from this company and we test it, because it has to be tested before it goes into mm-hmm. a, a tool crib and out into the hangar, uh, and if it comes back at five percent then it needs to be recalibrated because Mm -hmm. our limitations is four percent if they open up that torque wrench and and recalibrate it which they can do they have all the tools to do it it voids the warranty and so he asked me hey if we have to recalibrate one of your torque wrenches because it's not right from the factory and there's that that chance that that can happen um would it void the warranty and i my question was like why why would that void the warranty i don't understand you guys do this is what you do we we could pay you to recalibrate (laughs) our torque wrenches so um, so to answer this question, I know that in the aviation world, it's six, it's six months. Um, in the automotive world or DIY, DIY world, um, I would, you know, I don't, I, I, I wouldn't know truly what to say with authority. Um, I can honestly tell you that the torque wrenches that I've owned when I was before I got involved with Sonic, I never, I never calibrated yeah, I've them. Never I didn't calibrated know that you, that you had. So to. how do you, do you have to send it in? Is there a DIY to do that? You, you know, have, you have companies that do it. Yeah. There's companies. Um, what's that company that we use team torque team torque is a, is a, as a company, um, that, that does it. You'd send it in, they would calibrate it. They'd come back with some kind of a, a certification that, uh, mm-hmm. certification, same, same certificate that ours come with in the first place. Just yep. a certification saying that you're within 3% of the appropriate tolerance. So. And you do, um, you guys don't have digital torque wrenches. We do not. I don't like to. I, I have I just got two Milwaukee ones. So like they have this big fancy, big display on. I just don't like it. I don't like the click ones. It's just way better. Um, what are your thoughts, you two guys? What is your thoughts on tool grid versus foam? Uh, like some pros and cons. Uh, the only pro that I would see is that in your world it would allow you to have multiple brands of tools and you can like basically come in and, and some have some kind of organization or system for the tools that you already own. That's mm-hmm. the only pro. I mean that once you and for, for your for your you know, your audience who if you have not opened up a drawer, like when you first opened up that drawer in my house and I, the reason that Adam and I walked away and started talking because you had so much drool coming out of your mouth <laughs> over those tools and it just it really spoke to your your O C D um, once you once you see and experience uh, a foam organized tool setup, everything else is going to be um, you know second. So it's it's a, is it a yeah, solution? Of I course, agree. of course, it's a solution. It's a and I think I think it really ends up being a combo, right? You would you know because there's some tools you guys don't make. Correct. Yeah. You know, and and you don't make a you don't make like again. How do you make a universal CNC'd? No thing that's right. precise. You, you don't, right? So you, you as, as maybe as a supplement, like you said, you you have, you have some people who might buy, uh, you know, a five thirty three piece Sonic tool set, and then they have a couple things that they either already own or they want to have a specific brand of a certain type of tool, right. and and maybe the tool grid system would be a, a, a way for them to kind of maintain some sense of organization in their uh, in their toolbox. Well, I, mean, I would I would say that you know the number one. Pro compared to the Sonic Foam system to Tool Grid would be the actual organization. You know, when you open your you know drawer with Sonic Foam system, each tool has a cutout and is labeled, mm-hmm. and also comes with an inventory control sheet. So let's say that you have a hole missing on your Tool Grid, you could be like, man, I I don't know what goes there. You can count your sockets. You know, I got my eight, my nine, my ten. Oh, it's my eleven. Yeah, not your ten. You got that. Um, but with Sonic, you, you can open the drawer and immediately see oh, the 11 space of my quarter inch 
side you know sockets is missing mm-hmm. um i need to order a new one because i lost it um, i'm going to get my inventory control sheet out which comes with every one of our phones and has a part number right you know each space is marked as you know that's space number 78 on the whole you know on the whole system so you look at space 78 gives you a part number you can order a new part so i would just say the actual organization of of the sonic foam system um is that that would be the biggest pro in my eyes compared to tool grid mm, yeah agreed what do you think, um, uh, you know, you're always taught not to to loosen bolts with your torque wrench. Um, do we know, do we, is there any way to quantify the harm that does to your calibration when you're using your torque wrench to loosen? I, 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 well, I can't tell you, like, why um, uh, from an engineering standpoint, um, but I, I'm willing to trust a lot of very smart uh, veteran technicians that if, they, if, there's, if they've determined at some point that you do not do that, then I'm going to trust that they know better than I do, and I'm not going to do that. I don't trust them, so I want you to figure that answer okay, out Okay, so here's why. We want to sell swivel breaker bars, mm-hmm. and so we tell people you cannot use a torque wrench to do that <laughs> so that we can sell more breaker bars. No, that's, it's that's honest. That's not the truth. That's uh, not the truth. Um, here's a question I have. Um, one of the one common question that Kyle and, and, um, and the guys in the tech support team will get, uh, Jeff and – and now um, we've just moved Tommy over there and uh, Aaron. So now we have, we have a four-person team and tech support team. Um, is what's the difference between MSS and MSS Plus? I'm going to let Harrison answer that question. Yeah. So, so I, 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 to be honest with you, we can't speak to specifics. MSS Plus is its own business within our business Um, we have a dedicated uh, sales team for mss plus we have dedicated project managers for mss plus Um, but you know very very high level differences between the two um, is mss plus was engineered from the ground up we took what we knew from mss um, we took what we knew from our competitors um, and you know our our executive team and Europe's executive team, this was a collaborative effort for probably, what, two years before we actually even launched it. Um, so, you know, we wanted the, the strongest rails, uh, or, or excuse me, drawer slides or, or rails. Um, it's a little bit taller, it's a little bit deeper. Um, you know, has integrated power uh, throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, has, you know, vented slots so that you can uh, charge your drills and uh, air hammers and, you know, in the ventilated uh, power drawers. Um, so it's, I, I can't go into specifics on that. Um, but, you know, like, like I said, we do, we have a whole team dedicated. So, you know, pass your questions to Matt and he'll send it to us or, you know, contact us and we'll get you set up with our MSS plus team. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, that, that product line was just, it's over, it's almost over-engineered. You know, it's, it, it, it is, is it's 100% globally sourced to where, you know, I, you know, not, not going on record saying this is correct, but, you know, hinges are Italy and, uh, you know, as Nobel coding curated, is De- right. Denmark. And, you know, so each, each one of the individual pieces that make MSS plus were sourced for a very specific reason to make the best and strongest cabinet on the market. Mm-hmm. Here's another question. Uh, MDP asks, would Sonic be open to making foam inlays for the new Milwaukee tools that uh, the OG store is planning on coming out with? Could we make something like that? Yep. Yeah, whereas, or I have a, a line of tools. We talked about that this morning where I have a line of specific, you know, electric tools. And then as long as I buy, you know, minimum order quantities of, you know, 100 or 200 uh, at a time uh, yep. that we could make a, a foam inlay that's labeled, you know, M12, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you're on to me. You're stealing my ideas. MVP. Well, we, and we already we already actually have the capability of, of doing that. We have, uh, and I just quoted a, a job um, last week or a couple weeks ago where uh, a detailer who wants to have MSS set up and he wants to have all his ceramic coating bottles uh, lined up in foam. And so uh, because, because again, you know, going back to this obsessed I- idea that w- we want to make sure that if a customer, not that we want to be a, a, a product for everybody, but we want to make sure that there's, if, if a, a, a business or an enterprise or a customer ha- has a genuine need for something, there's a genuine demand for it, like laser etching. We didn't offer laser etching a year ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, we offer laser etching now. So uh, consumers can call, you know, they can they can pay to have each one of their tools marked with a, a five uh, character, you know, their character uh, set up on where they it's their, their initials, a number, last four, their social security number, whatever it is they want to do to personalize those tools. 
there's a reason to have it in the enterprise business to business world, like automotive aviation. Um, but in the process of going down this laser etching, uh, the machine that we have also uh, will cut laser cut foam. So the foam that you buy, the Sonic Tools foam, that's a CNC um, high density foam, right? And we mm -hmm. have an option of getting a, a different grade foam uh, for things like that specifically. So it may not be the exact same foam and density foam. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be cnc at least at this point. It will be laser cut, but we actually do have that option. And we've quoted out uh, numerous jobs since we have went down this path of laser etching for uh, some custom setups like that. Mm. There's mm -hmm. a price you're going to pay for it. I mean, it's uh, it's one of those things, but it can, it can be done. Sure. Got it. What else are we missing? Um, we've told the Sonic story. Um, that's about all the questions that everybody has. Um, what else do you guys, you guys have anything else that comes to mind that we didn't talk about of the, the Sonic, either the cabinet line or the, um, one thing I haven't gotten into are like the floor jacks and the, uh, some of the other, I've gotten the tool carts, but I haven't done a lot of the other stuff that you guys do. Um, you also sell in Europe specifically like kits for like Audi or, or VW Audi or BMW where it's all the little, you know, all the little wire, uh, grommets and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, um, and, uh, what am I thinking of the little plastic screws and things clips. that they have clips. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Clips. Um, what else? Um, what, are, what about the rest of the Sonic catalog? Um, could you see me, um, you know, talking about here in the future? Well, we just talked about our little rolling seats. You know, we're gonna we're gonna get a, a rolling seat out to you. Okay. Uh, little rolling, uh, is what you call them, a rolling yeah. seat. Yeah. Um, that's a good question, Matt. I, I, you know, how are the floor jacks? They're good. They're robust. I mean, they're they're heavy, robust floor jacks. You know, are they? they are do you guys well. source those from another another floor jack company? Is that something that you guys OE? I mean, yeah, they're manufactured to our our specs. They're yeah. not something that we don't. It's not just a relabeled uh, version. Are of they like? Jack. Are they like you know IMSA grade floor jacks? Or are they DIY garage floor jacks? What are? What well, are they? I'm not sure what IMSA. I mean, I know what you mean by IMSA grade being professional grade, hundred percent. They're not. This is not a. Uh, something that I would say would compete with a, a you know a Craftsman or a, anything you'd buy at like at a, a auto parts store or Harbor Freight. It's this is professional uh, grade heavy duty stuff. Cool. So stay tuned. We're going to be digging into. I'm I'm excited for that uh, that video of the everything, the everything package. It's going to be awesome. I mean, I want a whole pallet or two pallets. Of tools to show up. I think it'll be more more than that, but yeah, it'll be several pallets of tools here for sure. That's what I need. I need that. And then uh, you know, I've got my S12 box. My my new um, uh, the guys brought me a gift. They brought me a Le Mans blue painted S9 uh, box to match the M3. Um, so I wanna I wanna start you know fumbling around with how we could start to build out you know smaller sets of tools and toolbox combos and again you guys already have a lot of that but i'm so darn stubborn i want my own right i want i don't like i don't like what you pick i want to pick it myself uh and so we're gonna we're gonna dig through that and of course make videos and share share the process i'm sure i'll get you guys down here again uh to kind of go over this stuff the other thing that i would like to create which we've been talking about for a year now is the um is to create like a travel backpack uh, and so I think we'll do that when I pulling from this, you know, complete line, I can just pick and choose and, and, you know, touch and feel it and put it in place and figure out what makes the most sense. Uh, so that's, that's another thing that I'm, I'm interested in tackling as well, but who knows that, you know, the, the, the catalog is extremely robust and there's some other things I need to dig into, mm -hmm. uh, as we, as we continue to develop a relationship. And then my goal long-term would be never to be have private, to have private labeled stuff, but to have it co-branded. Like we talked about having having a you know obsessed garage embossed you know foam inlay package, right? Uh, and then having an a, a package of ascent from working through them from beginners all the way up to you know expert level, uh, and and have the 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 B I A E you know version of a of an ascent where it all fits together where there's as little waste as possible as you're buying your 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 stuff. We talked about you know it, you know your kids for father's day buy you a package of you complete your set of screwdrivers because you started with a beginner set and then you work your way up to the advanced set of screwdrivers and then you do the same thing with your your ratchets and we even talked about there are many times when i'm like bryce where's the three-eighths ratchet 
you know, so we, I probably need three of them. I'm going to do the same thing with my son. You know, time. <laughs> I'm like you're searching around everywhere, and then you end up using the wrong three eighths ratchet just because that's what you had in the drawer left over. Uh, and so having, you know, having three of certain tools and figuring out what makes sense, that's that's what I want to provide the world with. It's going to take me a while, but we're going to get there. So the, the setup that you saw um, in, in my old house in Oviedo, uh, when I would come home, I traveled during the week, right? So when I'd come home, I would pull in the garage, and I would get out of my car and go open up my drawers. Just check and see what was missing. And I'm like, yep, my number two screwdriver's gone. And so, like, instead of coming in and saying, hey, I'm home, you know, and giving my kids a hug, I'm like, Garrett. Where's my tools? Where's my number two screwdriver? Yeah. Oh, well, mom had me do this. You know, while you're gone, like put my tools back. Hey, the one thing, I will, one thing I will ask is, we talked about this earlier, um, is talk a little bit about your experience with us because one of the things that I think is probably the biggest differentiator with us, let's let's say everything's equal. Let's say quality is equal with these other brands. Um, the thing that I that w- the reason we keep winning business from those. Uh, those competitors is like literally service, communication, service, attention to uh, making sure that we're, we're a customer-centric uh, company. And, and we talked about this earlier where you said, hey, listen, dealing with you guys um, has been different. You want to kind of speak on that a little bit? Yeah. Um, I feel like you guys understand me, uh, especially now as, you know, you've seen, we've seen some success. You know, everybody sells you a song and a dance. Once we got through the, I'm not just an influencer, I'm doing something different. Uh, I think that's where we kind of aligned and that you guys are doing, you know, sort of disrupting an, an existing industry. I'm disrupting an existing retail world of uh, really what I'm doing doesn't really exist. Uh, and so I think we, we have, a, a the, from a brand perspective, there's a lot of alignment there. Um, but one of the things I've experienced that really um, tells a lot is like when I got my cabinets, and I don't think you guys took any special care over what a customer would get. When I got my initial cabinets, there were, you know, there'd be like a single uh, 34 inch cabinet on a single pallet strapped. And the box showed up, you know, with the, the, the way it was packaged, it would be really hard for the shipper to jack it up. And again, it's impossible to, to, to say that we can get everything to you perfectly, but I just felt like that was a microcosm of, of how the relationship would go. And, um, and so you guys have, no one's ever brought me anything before, you know, toolbox. That's pretty cool. Um, and I feel like in, in the, you know, a lot of my path in this, uh, I'm not looking for anybody to pat me on the back, but I'm looking for partners, not adversaries. And I've had a lot of adversarial relationships with a lot of the vendors over the years where they, I felt like they were, you know, just not, not helping me try to get the message out mm-hmm. to the world. And you guys have been extremely helpful. Any, any project I've ever called you on and said, Hey, I want to do this. Are you in? You know, live in Wiki Garage, Adam LZ's Garage. Um, we've done some other projects. Um, you guys have always been, you know, receptive to that. Or if I wanted to do something for my garage here, hey, I want to build this desk thing and make a video series. Um, that's been that's been extremely helpful. Helpful that you guys have been so on board. And then I think that I haven't had a tool break yet, um, but I'm assuming it's going to be a pretty simple process. And that's important to me because I can't I can't fix it. I'm just can't there's nothing i can do about it there's nothing kyle can do about it nothing bryce can do about it we can't we can't fix a tool uh and so it's so important to me that you guys have the infrastructure and have thought through it so i don't have to do that you know so we can stay focused on teaching people about the product instead of focused on you know fixing it Uh, but i also don't want to pass the buck and not you know not have a solution for people yeah and so that's been, you know, that's been really, you know, a, a great experience for me. And I think we're only going to get better as you guys get more, as I get bigger and have more facility, you guys get bigger and have more facilities uh, to have more product in stock. Um, I mean, I think just like my goal is to answer everybody's question within the hour, um, I think you guys have a goal to ship it out the same day, you know, that or the, within a week. You know, that would be the goal to be able to ship a $25,000 cabinet array and have everything in stock all the time. Correct. So we're working toward that, and you you know it takes massive capital to get there, and I think that the way that we're doing it is the right way to do it at scale online, teaching people about the product, take better photos, take make better videos, and continue to update that over and over and over again. Write descriptions, make sure dimensions and all that stuff is very legible and understandable, and um, you know we don't, neither one of us are using stock images. 
when the, and the transparency I think goes a long way when you when you're transparent with yeah. your customer there's a level of trust that yeah, tell people, once that trust tell, happens yeah, tell people where your tools are made don't yeah. apologize for it tell people what your platform is don't pretend you know I talk about this a lot with like a lot of the the detailing stuff don't pretend like you're mixing it up in your bathtub when you're not a chemist mm -hmm. I'm not a freaking chemist I took chemistry two in high school that's about it you know and chemistry one in chem lab in college and that's a, that's the extent so I'm not gonna pretend like I'm, I'm mixing it up in my bathtub right uh, and so don't pretend like you're make, making the tools in the, you know in, in the backyard you know the tools are being sourced and and curated from all over the world to put together a good system yep and they're gonna stand behind it yeah we're proud of it I mean, that's the thing that we the the passion and, and the culture uh, you know in our office in Auburn is is pretty incredible when you think about um, how much we believe Blake one of the one of our sales guys there he's uh, he had he actually he was a car guy he knew nothing of Sonic uh, he graduated Auburn University with aviation and business management degree and uh, he said once I educated myself um, and, and that's the key is education right once he educated himself he's like oh yeah this is yeah, I'm hundred percent yeah fall yeah, in 100%, love. In this I can I can do, I can do this and he can, and then obviously he gets behind it he's He's literally one of our top sales guys because his passion and his belief in our product, true, like truly transparent belief in it, yeah. uh, is conveyed in his conversations with. It's with very customers. easy for the, a very easy line of products to love. You know, it's, it's for pretty easy for me. To me, it's about the ecosystem. That's what that's what does it for me. Uh, you know, I wake up in the middle of the night saying, "Man, I should be curating." You know the. Uh, maybe Sonic has a better ratchet or a better wrench than you know, Snap-on and Matco, but then it doesn't. The ecosystem doesn't fit. So sometimes it makes sense to carry an entire product line. Uh, in this case, to me, it, it makes a lot of sense to do that. So, anyway, thanks for uh, thanks for coming all the way down here, guys. Awesome, thanks, man. Thanks to all of you. Thanks for your questions. Uh, next week's live stream will be back to uh, back to normal. Me ranting about crap. I'm feeling pretty chill today. No, no reason to yell and scream about anything. So that that's always a good thing. It's because we're here. Yeah, yeah, I'm on my best behavior. <laughs> Actually, I haven't been on my best behavior. I, I you guys, I, I tell it like it is. Do I not? Oh, <laughs> just yeah, like yeah. everybody. Else. I, that's what I appreciate, though. I mean, so, so anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Um, we'll catch you, uh, catch you next week, and I may have some impromptu live stream this this weekend. I'm not sure. I'm still recovering from my. Uh, I'm starting to work out like a psychopath again. So. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll, uh, I'll lose that uh, that extra 20 pounds the camera adds and, uh, and it actually comes off. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you're listening on the podcast, we'll, uh, we'll catch you soon.